Jane and I are staying with Dolly and James Mayton in Lawrenceburg, and, and she uh, was filling me in on an article she wrote for the Gospel Advocate about elders' wives, and hey, <coughs> grab a hold of that edition, you might want to read it, it's a good article, it's a good article, but I've enjoyed my stay, and Jane has too, and it's good to be here, it's like being back home with family, it always is. Um, Jeremy Barrier asked me to speak on the subject of, uh, or the topic of uh, teamwork, and I can't think of a better topic to speak about. And, and almost everything we do in the church, or in, in, here at school, or in mission fields, involves teamwork. Uh, Jesus' ministry was centered around teamwork. And that passage that Brother read, uh, I look at that and some things stick out to me that Jesus prayed for his team. Jesus prayed for his team. And uh, I find myself a lot praying for the team that works with me. To do what I do in, in the inner city work, it takes a small army to get it done. When I was in Nashville, working with Lionel Thomas up there, and, and that's the model that we follow, that's where uh, the inner city work began was with him. He came out of uh, Vietnam as an, as an serving as an MP in Saigon and came back to be a part-time youth minister, full-time foster parent and part-time mechanic and did all that in one and then he started inner city and it took a team of people. And when I was when I came to serve there in the early 90s and throughout the 1990s, uh, we had uh, about three nights of Bible school where we picked up inner city children, uh, about 1,500 of them throughout the week. And uh, there was about 20 of us on staff. Some of us worked in the field. Some of us worked in support staff. But it was a great team of people. But another part of that team that was just as impressive as, as the mechanics of the staff that, that worked there was the eight, eight to 900 volunteers that it took to run that operation. And we had two clear objectives in our ministry, and we still have them today. And I use, the, I use these objectives in Mobile. And that's to reach the lost and to involve Christians. And that, and that second objective is so important. Uh, we are on a much smaller scale of Mobile. I have one night of Bible school and I have three buses. And I, we pick up about 80 to 90 children a week. And I probably have, but I have about 50 people from 10 area congregations who come and help us out in one capacity or another. Some of those people drive buses. Some of them teach in learning centers. Some of them just simply sit next to an inner city child on the bus and help them make it from the community to the learning center and back, and hopefully they make it too. <laughs> but uh, we have a good time. You know, Lytle years ago, if you don't know Lytle Thomas, if you ever had a chance to meet him, uh, I encourage you to do that. He's, he's one of my mentors. But Lytle told me years ago, he says, Chuck, he says, one day you're going to be driving in a driving a church bus, going down a long highway, maybe bringing a busload of kids back from camp or from some field trip or whatever, and it's going to be a hot July day, and you're going to break down in the middle of the highway, and you're going to have a busload of screaming kids who are getting restless. You're going to put your face in your hands. <laughs> and he says, uh, you're going to get this deep sinking feeling that you're all alone. And he says, it's because you are. And he says, and if that's the feeling that you have, it's because you didn't listen to a word I said. Team building, teamwork is essential to what we do. It's got to be at the top of the list. I've been doing some leadership training with our men at the inner city church, and Jane's been teaching the Phoebe class. Uh, to our ladies on Sundays this, quarter, this last quarter. And one of the things that I'm trying to, and if you're taking notes, I know this is what I'm about to say sound, is, sounds elementary, but you might want to write it down or at least try to remember it. But here's what I've been teaching the men at, at the inner city congregation. Uh, we're doing, it's more like a stewardship training where I'm trying to get the men to come forward and take ownership of ministry which means they're going to have to involve members of the congregation in what they're doing, buildings and grounds, for example, uh, bus maintenance, all those facets, that, uh, different facets that are there, uh, they need to involve other people. But I, I explained to them that their, their ministry 
and I want to connect some dots here, their ministry is only going to be as well developed as their team. Their team is only going to be as well developed as their leadership. And their leadership is only going to be as well developed as they are. Personal development plays a key role in team building. It, in John Maxwell's terms, it, it has, leadership has everything to do with influence, nothing more, nothing less. And he is so right. But here's something I want to point out. I want to, in, that, in this, uh, Matthew, I want to read Matthew chapter 4 real quick, verse 18 through 22. While walking by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who was called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, and for they were fishermen. And he said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Immediately they left their, their nets and followed him. And, and going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James the son of Zebedee and John his brother, in the boat with Zebedee their father, mending their nets. And he called them. Immediately they left the boat and their father and their father and followed him. And in, in this passage and in the previous one, let me go back to the one in Luke real quick and make one, one point. Out of all his disciples... Jesus chose only 12 to be his apostles. He didn't choose all of them to be apostles. And so when you're trying to recruit a team to help you do your ministry, whatever ministry it is that you're doing, you want to recruit a team that will get the job done. And sometimes in the mechanics of that, you want to make sure that you don't put square pegs in round holes and round pegs in square holes because they don't fit. So there's a great deal of, uh, of uh, troubleshooting and, and mechanics behind your leadership and building the team. But then the second part of this, uh, understand the influence that Jesus had. These men dropped everything they were doing. And, and after they, uh, Jesus has his encounter with the rich young ruler in Matthew 19, 27, it says, Then Peter said in reply, See, we have left everything and followed you. You have to have a great deal of influence in somebody's life to get them to drop what they're doing to follow you. But here's what we need to understand. It's not everybody was influenced by Jesus. See, sometimes we want to go stick a 45 in our head and pull the trigger because not, nobody wants to help us do our ministry. But don't lose sleep over that. Not everybody's going to be drawn to you. Today, in 2012, Team Jesus is very much alive. But not everybody is influenced by Jesus. So it's not the end of the world. So you look for those people that are drawn to your leadership, that are drawn to your ministry. But I guarantee, I guarantee you this. I, I go before a lot of congregations and talk about the work. I'm a hard sell. I, that's the reason why I need to have Jane with me. It's easy to sell what I'm doing when she's with me. She makes me look good. But ministry will sell itself. I always remember that. Ministry will sell itself. You, if you're like me and you're a hard sell, if you develop a quality ministry, it will sell itself. Now, when it comes to, to, to the team leadership, understand, and like in Matthew chapter 16, I love reading about Jesus' ministry and his leadership of that, of that team. He, he debriefed his team. I don't know if you ever thought of it in that terms, but in Matthew chapter 16... Who do men say that I am? Some say you're John the Baptist. Some say you're Elijah, Jeremiah. He was debriefing his team. I don't know if you ever that. Here it is, God in the flesh. And here's what I want to impress upon you too. God in the flesh, known as Jesus, had to have a team. What does that tell you about you and your ministry? You need to develop a team. I know we like to think that we can get up in the pulpit on Sunday mornings or, or in lecture ships and gospel meetings and and, and we need to fine-tune our speaking ability. But you're going to get a lot more done by what you can do by surrounding yourself with people who can help you get the job done than you can for 20 minutes in the pulpit on Sunday morning. You've got to be surrounded by some people. And if you have that direction as you develop a team, you will do well. Uh, he focused his team, Matthew chapter 14, John the Baptist has been executed. It, it, they're there before the crowd. <coughs> the disciples want to do. Come, let's go. We're tired. Let's go home. He says, "No, they've had nothing to eat. You feed." Them. He challenged them. He focused them. 
He empowered his team. Matthew chapter 28, the, what we call the Great Commission. He produced himself. He reproduced himself and his team. Just read the entire book of Acts. Okay. Leaders work themselves out of a job. Leaders work themselves out of a job. So I had somebody ask me the other day, well, Chuck, what's going to happen to inner city in Mobile if you die? Well, I hope it keeps going. It shouldn't, it shouldn't stop. Uh, if I'm reproducing myself and other people, Jesus did it and did it well. Today, his mission is still mine. Case in point. And so, as, as we consider Jesus' leadership, consider the fact that he had a team. You need a team. I often tell that to interns that work with me. Jesus, if Jesus did it, you do it too. Uh, Heather served with me as an intern. Heather, that team, you were a great part of that team dynamic during, during that summer. Uh, but in the, what you've done since then, when you've worked with the kids on the bus here in this area, you need a team of people. you got to have that team. You're a team. And the team works together. Uh, Jesus was a part of here. And then my last point, when you may see yourself as a leader on that team, but always remember you are a part of that team. Not a boss, but a part of that team. That's the role that you may have is leading it. When you take a mission trip to Mobile, which I know you're going to do sometime, you come down and visit with me at the inner city, you're going to need a team of people to come with you. Lytle said one time, he says, anytime somebody comes to the table with a bright idea, it's going to take at least 30 people to put it into action. Okay. And you think about what it takes to do a mission trip. You got your young people, you got your interns, or your, your chaperones, your adult chaperones, but that doesn't, that's not where it stops. Then you got to communicate with the people who do finances in your church, the deacon that's in charge of making sure the band's ready to go, the elders. So there's a great team there at work with you. And so make that make sure you can put that on your list of things that you do when you build your ministry. Make sure you involve the Lord's people in what you're doing and build the team that Jesus did. And that's all I have to say today. Thank you for your time.